Hello everyone, welcome to another whistling video. I'm going to be talking about a few advanced techniques, some of which you'll know, some of which maybe you won't. And um, let me know if you've got any whistle techniques that I haven't thought of. Firstly, I'm going to start off with what I call overblowing and how to get a full two octave range out of a whistle. You probably know this already. Whistle has six holes, which gives you seven notes, right from, all the way from no fingers on, top notes, all the way down to all your fingers on, which is the bottom note. So, if you want to get an octave above, it's just a matter of putting all your fingers on again and blowing a bit harder. If you want an extra top note, take your top finger off and blow even harder. So that gives you a full two octaves on a whistle. Next, I'm going to be talking about vibrato. I'll just keep sw swapping whistles here to give a bit of variety. With vibrato, a bit like singing, but you're not actually making a sound with your voice. What you're aiming at is to try and get lots of short breaths, which are kind of joined together. So kind of like... And if you're doing that, you'll feel that in your stomach. Your stomach muscles will be controlling that breath. Singing teachers will t always tell you to breathe from your stomach, so do a lot of woodwind teachers. Um, and if you're doing vibrato, that will build up your stomach muscles, you'll get a good stomach. So keep doing the vibrato. You'll probably have a natural speed of vibrato. That's part of your distinctive playing style. You can change the speed a bit, but you probably find that there, there are certain speeds that work best for you, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's part of your style. Next, I will talk about half holing. I'll demonstrate this first with this whistle, which has particularly big holes. It's a Howard low D whistle. Whistles give you whole tones, but if you want a half tone, you just half uncover a hole. And on a whistle, since there's no there's no metal work, there's no pads, you don't just have to half cover a hole, you can quarter cover it, sort of ten percent cover it, one eighth cover it, so you can get a, a full bend from one note all the way to another note. And that's used a lot in folk music. If you want to play notes fast on a whistle, not only do your fingers have to move fast, but your breath needs to move fast. You can just slur the notes, which is just using one breath for all notes, which is fairly easy. Um, tonguing is where you play individual notes. And to get those separate breaths, instead of using the vibrato technique, because doing <laughs> would be exhausting on your stomach pretty quickly, so you use tonguing. So what you're doing is going down the whistle. So that is tonguing. Next technique, I'll swap whistles again is finger work, I'm going to call this. If you're playing a, a long note, you can just momentarily lift a finger off very quickly, which gives not exactly a different note, but a kind of break in the note. It doesn't have to be the, the bottom note. It can be a different finger. And you can momentarily drop a finger on. It's really a matter of experimenting with what works well and what sounds awful, but it does add a bit of distinctiveness to your playing and can make things sound a bit more folky and more interesting. Instead of dropping an extra finger on just one note below, you can drop it on a space below the bottom note, so it's not actually changing the pitch of the note. 
very slightly making it flatter in this case. But what it's mainly doing is changing the sound of the notes. And if you like the Ilian pipes, um, those make a kind of similar kind of burbling sound almost or fluttering sound like that. And that's another way of adding a bit of interest. If you're using vibrato and fluttering, then that makes long notes a bit more interesting. And another thing you can do on the breathing side, similar to tonguing, is rolling. If you can roll your R, then you can probably do this as well. You're aiming to kind of go down the whistle. So. The last technique is what I call a whooping. If you know music by the band Jethro Tull, the flautist not only blew down his flute, he kind of sung down his flute. So what you're doing here is kind of going down your flute. So which gives it almost like a kind of distorted guitar effect or a kind of blues sound. And you don't just have to sing the same note as your whistle's playing, you can sing a harmony, so you're singing two notes at once. So if you add all those effects together, your boring old tunes sound a lot more interesting. Last thing is a bit of hacking. This whistle here, you can take the top off for tuning, but why not put it on the wrong end of the whistle entirely? This means the spacing of the holes is totally wrong, but it gives you a really interesting scale. And if you want to just make a kind of ethnic, kind of totally weird sound, a sort of non-Western scale, then use all the same techniques. Sounds pretty weird, but if you want weird, that's one way to get it. Okay, I hope those are a few techniques that you might not have tried before. Try them out. Happy whistling. Thanks for listening.